Hi everyone, welcome to the Ecamm channel. This is Xue Hang. In our last tutorial, the tutorial 15, we described how ionic liquids work in batteries. In this tutorial, we are going to show how supercapacitors work in ionic liquids. First, let's take a look at the electrode before charging. Once the electrolyte is added onto the electrode, what will happen to the micropoles and mesopoles in the electrode material? For the solid state NMR, the absorption of the electrolyte into the pores will result in a clear peak sheet, reflecting the confinement of the ions. Adding very small amount of electrolyte onto the electrode material, NMR signals are observed that are shifted towards lower frequencies. It means that the electrolyte goes into the electrode material before charge. So this is a schematic shows MD simulation works of ionic liquid different sized pores. The CM paper defines that the wettability of the pores is highly depend on the surface chemistry of the carbon and the nature of the electrolyte. In other work, the Nature Energy paper, they further record the diffusion process of electrolyte at non-charged states. YP80 has relatively larger pore size compared to YP50, so the diffusion coefficient of the cation is much faster in YP80 than YP50. It can also be observed that the anion diffuses faster than cations in YP50. All these simulative and experimental results shows very clearly that the pore of the material is already filled with electrolyte before charging. Conrad and Konishov have proposed to use ionophobic pores for supercapacitors. Just like hydrophilic and hydrophobic, ionophobic means the material expels the ions away. If we imagine that a pore that is not filled with any electrolyte before charging, there should be much less ion diffusion resistance during the initial filling of the pores. Based on the simulation, the empty pores will start a soap ions at a certain voltage. This voltage is usually high, and the diffusion of ions will be even faster than in a bulk electrolyte. In this way, a supercapacitor can realize a fast charge and discharge rate with a very high energy density. However, so far, there is no material shows the ion phobicity, so we are still dealing with pores with initially filled electrolyte. Then there are three proposed mechanisms during charge and discharge. The counter-ion absorption, ion exchange, and co-ion desorption. For counter-ion absorption, the steric effects and the columbia effects between ions make the ion diffusion the most difficulty among these three situations. For ion exchange, the entrance of the new ions and the exit of the counter ion will probably bring new steric effects. For core ion desorption, the resistance should be the smallest. Here, the diffusion coefficient is plotted with the voltage. On the cation side, the diffusion becomes much slower with the increasing of the negative voltage. It is clearly different from the anion side. On the anion side, the diffusion resistance increases with the voltage much slower compared to the cation side. That is highly possible that the mechanism for cation absorption is counter-ion absorption and anion is perhaps ion exchange mechanism. The charge mechanism can also be influenced by other factors such as solvents, polarization, and the type of ionic liquids. If you are interested to know more about the ion transport in the bulk electrolyte and in the pores, I will make another video talk more about it. Last weekend, I moved from the United States to Europe. Although I have started with a new position, my friends John and I will keep updating the channel twice a month. Thank you all for the support to our channel. The videos in our Ecamm channel are completely free and only for educational purposes and knowledge distribution. It will certainly motivate us if you subscribe and like our videos. If you have any questions, suggestions, or find anything that is conflict of interest in any type, just leave us some comments. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.